congratulations. Basically, um, I, I spent like a year researching, reading every robotics book that I could, every book on AI. Um, we managed to get an off the record meeting with a guy at the MOD who's actually building intelligent machines. I mean, they've only got as far as, as mapping a slug brain. But apparently this is on the cards in the future. And the reason I did so much research is because I really wanted to make a sci-fi movie that you know, obviously is, is influenced in terms of my DNA as a filmmaker by, by other filmmakers, but the story itself and the science, I really wanted to make a movie about the real world as opposed to just trying to regurgitate other films. Mm -hmm. and, and so that was the, the idea behind so much research. And then John and I basically, I'd write a draft, send it to John, he'd tell me it was rubbish, I'd write another draft <laughs> and, and repeat for basically 12 months until right. we finally had a draft that we both felt very you know, uh, happy with. And, um, yeah, and then of course came the, the fantastic work of working with the actors because uh -huh. the key thing that brings a script alive then is that you sit down in a room and, and Katie and Toby and Dennis and, and, and Pruna all gave their time for rehearsal. So what we do is we go through the script and um, again they tell me what was rubbish and so we change it <laughs> and uh, really workshop it together and, um, and I think that's why the scenes are so good is because mm -hmm. you know everyone really knew their characters inside out and we had time to kind of work together and, and, and really do the best that we could as a team together. So did, did you two ever fight? <laughs> yes. Physically? Or? <laughs> uh, squabble, squabble. Yeah, every day we like to fight on the way in, in, in the car together until we crank you please work faster, no I can't, you know. But we had to get through so much in you know quite a short period of time crowd. In all fairness to him, kind of work miracles. Yeah. Um, we had like a four and a half week shoot for the first block of shooting, um, which was the main unit shooting. Um, uh -huh. And uh, yeah, no, in, in short, you know, we've been working together a long time now, so mm -hmm. we share ideas a lot, we share a good sense of humour, and you know, what he's saying about me saying draft strawberries, that's nonsense. What, what he writes is normally good, but we tailor constantly. Right. You know, we're, we're, we're always tailoring. So. What's the total time from the time you started to tonight? Uh, we're three years in now, I think. This is three years? Yeah. It's basically three years. So year, year of research, year of writing, and then um, four week shoot, and then editing with fantastic editor, Matt, who's there somewhere in the dark, hiding. There he is. So we did a really, really good job. We did a really good job. We did a really The fights, we me and John, me and John have been in company for, for seven years. Fights with Max <laughs> and, and everyone that you know helped the film progress as well. You know, I think I think disagreements are great because it, as long as it's not about ego, as long as it's about what's the best idea, mm. I'm all up for a, for a bargain. That's mm. great. You know, it's not about it's not about who's right. It's about what's right, what's right. best for the film. And, mm. and there's been a whole kind of series of those those processes. That's mm. I think as a director, it's really it's about getting the best out of people, and, and that includes the best ideas. And, mm. you know, it's all towards that aim of making the film as good as possible. Um, and, and part of it as well is, is um, we had a, a whole load of um, uh, test screens where we have audiences like this who come in and we give them cards. And, and it's quite unusual for an independent movie because we didn't have to. Mm. We could have just, our first cut is genius, and then sent it out. But of course, that's why so many independent films are rubbish. It's because the first cut is genius. There's a lot of them here. No, no, but it's just as a process. <laughs> In all fairness, we, we, we had a really bad experience. On our first yeah. film, we kind of cut it, and we locked and everything on little yeah. white lines, and we showed it to an audience, and they came back and were like, at the beginning, it was like 40 minutes too long. <laughs> so we had to then take it back out, unpack yeah. it, unpack the sand lock, and we just thought we weren't going to make that mistake again, yeah. really. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's great to have 
the feedback process, and, you know, and I think that that's key is to listen to the audience and try your best. And, and obviously, it's still those things that I try to do better, but it's, you know, it's, yeah. Well, um, is there anyone here who would recommend this film to a mate? Yeah. Uh, That's very kind. Thank you. Toby, Please do. You, you had a, the big role here. I don't know where the other microphone is. Do you want to just explain how you got drawn into this process? Because I thought your performance was magnificent. Well, I, I, I think initially it was just reading the script. I, I was sent the script, and I, I had to say generally the, the quality of the scripts, film scripts that I get sent. You know, you generally your heart sinks after about five pages. You just go, oh, there's no way I can make this. You know, it's very difficult to make this work. I don't believe it. And um, I felt with this script, I was drawn into this world. And I was particularly drawn into his world, Vincent's world, and the, the, his dilemma. And the, and the kind of, the, also the slightly unhinged quality that he has, it's like a kind of Dr. Frankenstein. Yeah. But he, you know, the, the fact that he's been working in this strange bunker, <laughs> and his, his outlook, you know, his, his, moral, his moral compass has gone totally haywire. Mm. And that the, his, his the, the pursuit of trying to save his daughter, is is his main motivating force, but then it, bec it becomes conflicted by what is going on, yeah. and I, I just I found it a really fascinating story. I thought, well, this is where we're heading somewhere in the future. Uh, who knows how far it's going to be down the line? But when we do start inventing, you know, the human the consciousness in machines, and then how do we the, the issues of how do you then treat these machines? Do you treat them like human beings, or are they machines? And, and that whole kind of moral dilemma I found really fascinating. That was so it was a combination of of I really I really liked Vincent's journey, but I also liked what the, the film was uh, dealing with. And your colleague, who was magnificent. How did you get involved in the in the project? Thank you. Katie, yeah. Um. Well, I had done a movie before called The Pact, and Jamie Carmichael, one of the producers for this kind of brought me to the attention and uh, put me in contact with Crad and John. And when they sent me the script, it was, it, was, it was like a dream role for an actress to be able to play a dual character, two different roles in the same film. Mm -hmm. Especially something with, that's so outside you where you really get to create something different. Mm -hmm. um, so when I read the script and then we had a Skype conversation because <coughs> I was in Los Angeles. Right. And um, yeah, went from there. And did you have to do any special training for all the combat scenes? And the I actually trained before. Um, I've I started as a dancer before I was an actress, and then that was I really obvious. <laughs> then I started doing martial arts, so I had trained a lot, which came in handy because uh, given our budget restraints and our time restraints, we didn't have much time to train for the fight sequences. But uh, and, and no stunt double. All the stuff, the backflip, everything. That sort of stuff. Oh, 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 oh. A backflip on a wet floor. <laughs> naked. Yes. <laughs> and your colleague, the daughter, how, how was that filming for you? Pardon? <laughs> what research are you doing, Jane? Uh, I am um, Redder, and I watched some YouTube videos with my mum, and she helped me. Loon for the role. <laughs> 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 yeah. well, uh, there's no script, there's no script. Can I just say things? No. Um, I would just like to, uh, well, I mean, I thought the same as Toby when I, the script was just such a grabber, it was such a strong script. But, um, I, uh, and it was wonderful to work on. We had such a blast doing it. And I think I'd like to mention the DP, Nikolai, who's Danish. And um, yeah, what a job he did. And um, it's, it's fantastic as an actor to work in good light. And uh, or, or almost no light at all. And I find that really exciting to do. It really gives you a buzz. 
just to have one lamp on the floor. I mean, it's just the atmosphere is extraordinary. Yeah, cool. And Puna, you had an unusual role because you never spoke Welsh or English, I don't think. Yeah, because I have an accent, maybe that's why. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, uh, yeah, um, I asked Radag why I never spoke. <laughs> The, the idea was that um, I didn't want them to speak a made-up language. I, I wanted them to speak a, uh, a real language because, uh, you know, just speaking gibberish, there'd be no emotion, there'd be no structure to what the infant soldiers were saying to each other. Obviously, it couldn't be English. I didn't want it to be a, a language, you know, like French, a bit of lip read. And so, of course, my fantastic about Puna is that she, with the whole implant soldiers, she taught them all Farsi, which we then adapted and manipulated in post so that they're all, you know, I didn't want it to be fussy either, but I wanted it to be a, a structured language where the actors knew exactly what they were saying. So there was real emotion as the, the, the half-human, half-robot spoke to each other. And, um, and so that's why it's not a political comment that they speak fussy. <laughs> I want to make that very clear. It was just purely an emotional thing where I, I just want, I didn't want uh, the audience to know. I just wanted them to feel what these, these traumatized soldiers, because the idea is that they've all suffered, you know, um, wounds in war and, and, mm. and sort of have this secret half robotic language to each other. And I'm yeah. very grateful to Quinn that she sort of took the time to teach all the soldiers that. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Right, um, amazing, talented group of people here. Does anyone have a burning desire to ask a question? There's one. <laughs> Thank you. Jesus. Yes, hello. Uh, my name's Simon. I actually provided the um, rubber suit for the film. We haven't spoken yet. But um, I just like very, very important questions. Actually, for Katie, um, did you enjoy wearing it? <laughs> you know what I did, actually. It's it was really stretchy, which I appreciate. So like you could move and do anything in it. The thing I didn't like was the mask, because that like well, that was scary because I couldn't breathe and I couldn't see. It was like we were taking doing takes and I had to hold the breath. And <laughs> but I loved the suit. It was awesome. And it really, I mean, as you guys saw, it looked amazing and it was a really cool uh, important part for the machine and the whole look of it. It, it, was, it was like the best ever Apple unboxing. <laughs> well, I, I, I did warn them about the mask. I said, she's, you know, she's going to have to breathe, you know. <laughs> there was, the, we didn't costuming win the Welsh BAFTA? With, yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I'm, the, I'm sure this the suit was very much an important part of that. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Thank you. You're more than welcome. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 no, sub no subtitles for the secret language, is that a different decision or...? Yeah, but I, I mean, I just really, I, I, it wasn't so much about plot, it was more about the emotion of, of those soldiers, and I wanted there to be a mystery with that, and there was some debate uh, whether we should have um, uh, subtitles or not. And I think that, again, through the test, through the testing process, we just kind of realised that actually we should trust the audience and allow them to come to their own conclusions with some things, and, and I thought the mystery of that, and obviously Puna is so expressive, with just her, her, her physical performance I thought was great. And, and so in the end we, we thought that it would take the mystery away from, from that story with, with sort of pinning it down to, to exact things. Yeah. Cool. Oh, yeah. um, yeah, over this side. Um, is this hold on, I'll bring the microphone over, okay. I think. Oh, this one, this side, sorry. Hi. Um, is this classed as a British film? Um, and um, how did you raise the money for uh, sci-fi? It's, it's you know, notoriously quite difficult to raise money for a film, like this, particularly if it's a kind of indie film. So well done. I love sci-fi, so well done. Um, yes, it is a British film. Um, and um, in terms of the, the raising the finance, well, it starts with a good script, um, and we had that. Um, and you know, we kind of tried to look outside the box a little bit for where we would, you know, search for money from. One of our executive producers actually here, who was, yeah. a, big, who was, a, who was a massive help on, on the film, um, and some other investors are here also in the audience. Um, but it was, you know, there was a lot of 
you know, me and Crado going around to rooms of people like yourselves with deeper pockets, or maybe not. Um, and uh, I'm doing a PowerPoint presentation and saying, look how great our movie's going to be. And, um, and a lot of them fortunately believed us. Um, so, <laughs> so that was that. And that journey was a, you know, that was a, a journey to find those people and to, you know, to build that faith in, in us. And, um, you know, we were very fortunate. But cool. I mean, I'll just say on that point, me and John sort of did the tour of the country to, to these, these meetings where investors are pitched lots of projects. And so many times me and John were there in the wings. <laughs> And someone was pitching like a new type of medical stent that was clearly going to make billions. And we were all like, oh, God, I wish we had some money to invest in <laughs> And then we go out and have to pitch this thing that I'd made up and that John was promising was going to happen. And, you know, so it, we, the, the people who invested really were a huge part of what this film happened because it was a massive leap of faith on their part. And, mm. and, and without people like that, films just don't get made now because the British film industry, I mean, it's, it's, it's a struggle to raise, raise money after the recession. So, yeah. Well, we'll save the violin music for tomorrow, <laughs> maybe. Any other questions? Yes, right in the middle here, in the front. Why don't you stand up so it projects just a bit more for the people in the back. All right. I was just wondering, what was the greatest challenge on the film, and how did you come up with the great dancing sequence? Um, the greatest challenge in the film was uh, both John and I uh, at Red and Black have had a company for seven years now, and, and we, we want to make the films that have inspired us to be filmmakers, but unfortunately that sets the bar really high, and so this was a massively ambitious project for us to try and get through, and, and we didn't quite realise how ambitious that was until about three days into the shoots, and we realised, oh my God, we've got another action sequence tomorrow, and then we've got this CG thing, and, and so just, just the size of the production on this type of budget just generally was, was a, you know, I mean, it's a massive testament to John's uh, work as a producer because every single penny, I don't know how far he stretched it, it must have, you know, almost invisible how, how, how the far he got the, the money to go. But, um, but in all fairness, you're coming on set every day and saying, like, we did a drama before this stuff first film, <laughs> so Crab's coming on set, he'd never done stuff before and stuff and VFX and all the rest of it. Yeah. And every day was a completely new challenge that you, yeah. you know, managed to get your head around. It was, it's been a journey, definitely. Why don't, why don't we, uh, why don't we ask um, the cast what the most challenging thing was? Toby and Kate and Uh Most challenging. I think, I think it was the schedule. The schedule was relentless. I mean, it was, we had a huge amount to do in a month. But, I mean, you know, the, the thing is that you just, you, in the end, it, 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 you just go with what you've got. And it was such a pleasure to, to work on. Um, there were some extremely long days, and we were working in a in this we were working in this factory in Bridge End that was just it was in pitch darkness. I think it was during the only week of sunshine of last year, if you remember. It was like one week during the Olympics, I think, where the sun shone and it didn't rain, and we were in this smoke-filled. Um, factory in Bridge End and didn't see any of it at all. Um, so yeah, that was that was quite challenging. Uh, I wasn't challenged at all. I just <laughs> turned up and did stuff. I, I actually, the, the, the hardest stuff is from the green screen. Uh, you know, when you're fiddling about with computers that aren't there and plastic sheets and stuff, and trying to make it look like it's just something you do every day. And that, that's uh, technically. Um, Quite tricky, but mostly I just had a ball, right? Thank you. Um, for me, preparing was was a little bit difficult because really finding a, a different way to stand, a different way to speak, and how the machine moves, and the development uh, that she kind of goes through as she matures throughout the film, and the diet and the exercise that came with it. And to answer uh, your question, it was about the dance scene. We uh, grabbed, they actually brought in a choreographer, and I think we ended up not using anything. Because it, it was, we didn't want to make it a dance scene where she's like, you know, spending in three four days and like technical thing, but more just the, the feeling of experiencing music and her being able to express that joy through, through movement. And I think we took somebody's iPhone when we shot that, and I had them turn on some music, press play, like really lightly, and then there was a, just a dirty puddle on the cement floor, and I just started getting into it and kind of just moving, because I came from the dance background, so 
That seems actually a lot of fun. Mm. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's where rehearsals, that's that's where rehearsals uh, really make a movie shine or moments in the movie shine because I'm sure Katie wouldn't have felt comfortable improvising something like that. If we hadn't had time to work together and talk through things, I mean, uh, apart from technically, you know, say, you know, no clothes either, it's very quite intimidating, quite pressured thing for an actress to do. And, and you, don't get, yeah, you don't get good moments on film like that unless you've had a chance to become a team. And, and that was, you know, I can't thank all the actors enough for because they're so busy and working all the time. So, you know, thank you very much for, for giving that to the production. It made a huge difference. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. What was the most challenging thing for you? Okay. Oh, for me, it was getting a part right for children who have Rett syndrome because I wanted to do justice for them. So that was. <laughs> Suri's character was very difficult through the script uh, because uh, no one talks about her and actually she doesn't talk. So finding her and just know what she's doing there and what she wants and um, what's her goal, that was very challenging. And I was just always thinking, why is she there? Why she never talks? And why she helps the machine? I was always have lots of questions about her. But hopefully at the end, I think, it's, it's, it looks good. <laughs> um, my biggest challenge was trying not to be starstruck all day on set <laughs> with all these actors that I admire. Um, but I pretty much had a ball. I thought it was fantastic. I had very little to do with the production, but it was just really good to see everybody working so well together, making a fantastic movie that we've seen today. Cool. Great. Just for a couple more quick questions, who else would like to ask a question? Oh, over there, yeah. At the back? In the back. Oh. <laughs> I'm not in the back, but uh, <laughs> uh, the score was amazing. I wanted to know if uh, you had an idea of what you wanted and sought out a composer, or if you worked with a composer and that you knew you wanted to work with and came to them and they led the direction that went in, but the kind of old school, early synth vibe, where did that... It's, it's, it's awesome, isn't it? It's a really, really <laughs> awesome score. And uh, the score was very a difficult part of the process because, you know, uh, it's not about talent, it's about getting the right tone to, to fit the world that uh, we created. And uh, I thought Tom Tom's work was absolutely awesome and he just got it and it was a very, very tricky thing to do. He's actually a very close friend of uh, John's and John found him and uh, Thank God you did because it was it made a massive difference to the movie. It's um it's like a couple of things on the production. We've you know we've we've grown up in, in Wales and making short films in Wales and Crowds had a short film in Rain Dance and we made our first feature film there and you build up the talent base and actually some of the VFX artists are just over here, Pete um, and Christian over here. Um, But it was very small, a guy called John Rennie, and he made a short film that me and Crab were in the same competition as, and we spotted him and said, I'd love to do some VFX. And since then, they've got like now employs 20 people. <laughs> it's amazing. So, <laughs> um, Sarah um, Rebuli is here, here also from Minimo somewhere. There. Um, there's, there's, there's some as well. And Felix, um, you know, they take, take care of a lot of the work uh, on the film. And I suppose with Tom, uh, the composer, you know, we grew up with him as well. We did two short films with him first, um, and then he was, you know, he was able to come on to this with us. And you know, it's nice to grow up with people. Yeah, I mean, neither John or I have any contacts in the business, I and mean, we've just learned how to make films through making short films. And one of the benefits of that is you learn how to make a small amount of money look like a lot of money. But it also means that you work with incredibly talented people who are also working towards. Yeah. What? When can we see this in the cinema? Can you give us a little snapshot of the distribution? Um, you know, content has done an amazing job with the film. We, um, we, we met them in Berlin in 2012 in, uh, in February and then by the July we were shooting and they'd already sold a bunch of territories on the film by then and, and now it's going to be seen in around 30 countries around the world. Um, so that's, uh, we're 
I'm proud to be proud of, and I'm sure our investors are really happy as well. It's <laughs> actually going to get out there, which is really good. So, and the UK, um, we're going to be releasing uh, in around the middle of March. Um, so you'll see it in, in cinemas then, and um, yeah, you know, so that, that's what's going to be happening. So it'll it'll get a decent splash for a, you know for a modestly sized movie. We'll get a, we'll get a good splash. That is cool. Thanks. 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 In, in March, when you see the machine coming up, and if you're here tonight, and if you don't mention it, it's not the way you do it. You mention it, okay? You mention it. There's a party in a bit with booze. Right? That's the bride, right? Uh, one last question. Who else? Right here in the front. Uh, I'm curious. You know, you, you guys spent a lot... Of, uh, sorry, sorry. I apologize. You guys spent a lot more time with these ideas, you know, thinking about it. I mean, do you think these... That machines or AIs, you know, should be like regular people and have to work and pay taxes and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I guess what I'm asking is like, you know, what is the next, like the sequel to your film? Have you thought of that? I mean, not, not even necessarily as a sequel, but like, like where does it go from there? Like, and I'm sure everybody on the, the team has ideas and stuff. And I'm just curious, like what it, the conversations were about where this was going, you know? Is there a machine too? I think the question is. <laughs> there, there's, there's definitely a machine too. Um, uh, I don't know how long it'll take to write it, but there's a machine too. I mean, sh sh the short answer is yes, I think, I think this is something we're going to have to face in the future. I think it seems, as humans, we like to take away people's rights that we don't recognise, that we don't understand. Yeah. And so um, I imagine the sequel would be about a group of sentient machines that have to fight to be recognised as human and have to take those rights from people. And um, unfortunately, that just seems to be the way that we work as humans, unfortunately. I don't know what I Well it. said, well said, yes. Yeah. I really like the concept of one working for me and paying taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Direct to producing. <laughs> well, what an amazingly talented bunch of people, and I'm so thrilled, but I'm so delighted that you agreed to screen the film at Rain Dance. Oh, thanks for having us. It's and, um, it's going to be really interesting to track each of their careers and that of the movie, is it not? And we at Rain Dance and we here at the View Cinema wish you all the best for the machine. Thanks for coming.